time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I am all out of gum. Welcome back to the greenhouse. Aphids, I've got an aphid problem and frankly, I've had enough of it. So, I've pulled out the big guns. It's time to take the fight to the aphids. To make this more interesting, what I've done is I've got two products. We're gonna be using two products. We're gonna be doing an experiment to test the efficacy of each one. As some of you already know, I already use neem oil extensively through the greenhouse and it's an excellent natural deterrent uh, it has the ability to smother the aphids um, in oils, which kills them. It stops them breeding. It stops their, their eggs from hatching and generally decreases their numbers. But it's not an instantaneous knockout and it's not certainly something you're gonna see immediate effects from. Uh, and when it's, the, your plants end up being a little bit like your children. They're not really on the same level, but those of you that have a greenhouse or grow plants that you've loved very much will understand exactly what I'm going on about. And uh, seeing them get hammered by small green, sap-sucking, foul insects is really, really painful. And you're gonna, if you're like me, you're gonna wanna step in immediately and really eradicate them as soon as possible. So I've got a selection of plants on the table over here, all of which I've isolated. I know they've got, um, they've got aphids on them. The others in the greenhouse, I've been hitting them with neem oil. Uh, it's had a great effect. I've been checking them out on a daily basis to see how uh, they get on. And basically, the ones in the greenhouse, I'm confident that I'm winning the battle with. If not, I, most of the plants I can't see any new aphids on, so I'm feeling very confident about them. But these, unfortunately, are definitely infected. And we're gonna be having a look at some obvious aphid damage. If I can find any of the, there's one right there. If I can find any of the aphids, we're gonna be doing some close up look at those, if I can do it. I'll try and involve the magnifying glass like I have done in previous videos so you can have a look. But you're certainly gonna see some deformed leaves. Uh, and what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be unpotting a load. Some of these I've had almost, especially these capenses over here, I've had these as long, almost as long as I've been growing carnivorous plants. So they are, they're not particularly fantastic plants, but there's they're deeply, I have an emotional attachment to those plants. So I'm damned if I'm gonna let an army of breeding green insects suck them to death. There's no way, absolutely no way. That's Oliver's greenhouse. Not aphids greenhouse. This is my this is my land. This is my land. These are my plants, not the aphids. So unfortunately, it's time to die. Okay, so one of the first things I thought we'd do is we'd actually try and have a look at these things close up and have a look at some of that damage. Now this is going to take some real ingenuity. Okay, I've got a light up magnifying glass, a wide angle lens, and a Sony six thing 4k camera so it, it's going to be tricky okay some things are going to be immediately apparent so we're going to see um, leaves which are all crinkled and mutated uh, and we're going to hope i can already see some on it especially on the flower stalks they seem to really like the flower stalks of the capenses and i'm purposely not going to cut them off i'm actually going to leave them on there because they're going to be part of the experiment that's right i'm going to take it from uh, them having my plants for lunch for us running some sort of horrendous well, not really horrendous, but uh, is it cruel? I don't really care, they're aphids and I hate them. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be turning them into a bit of an experiment. So it's gonna be quite interesting. So hopefully, using this, we're gonna get some close-up shots. So you're gonna be able to see what you need to look out for, because there's some real telltale signs that you've got aphids, because uh, they sometimes they're not exactly immediately apparent. They can hide underneath leaves. Uh, they can usually hide, if, especially if it's sundews, they hide down in the rosette, right where the leaves emerge from the stem from like the basically where the petiole is so they can be really really hard to spot sometimes but there are some telltale signs we're going to see some stuff on here and um i think it's going to be quite interesting so um so i've got a really itchy face all of a sudden oh what is that Whoa. it's because the aphids i'm freaking out they're on my face sucking my face that's freaking me out anyway so we'll get you guys we've got enough nap and we'll have a look see what we can see <clears throat> sorry about the brief interlude i had to pour myself a drink though i got so worked up uh, about the aphids attacking my plants that uh, I needed to consume alcohol. Anyway, so front and centre, does everyone remember my beautiful Drosera Adelaide? If I can find a picture of this puppy, what it used to look like in all its glory, I will show you it now. Uh, 
and if I haven't found a photo, then you'll just see nothing apart from this weird pause. So I think this is gonna work pretty well. Um, what we do is we'll have a quick zoom in. Have a look close up, look at the sorry states of this guy here. Now this is a half and half. This is half me and half the aphids that's caused this deformation. If you notice, the leaves are really crinkly, underformed like this. I mean, it's just it's really mutated, really sad. Hardly any dew. That's partly, this is some new growth coming out just here. But it's partly my fault. It's because I've been spraying it with neem. Uh, the neem oil tends to block um, the pore surface or the glands where it secretes its sticky exudate to catch its prey. So they sort of dry out and they get a bit, a bit crinkled. But this, this actual crinkling of the leaves here, this is as a result of the aphids actually sucking on the leaves, uh, at the cells of the leaves as they're actually growing. So this is, that's what that is caused. So what I'm gonna do is if I grab, I was actually surprised at how well this is gonna work. So I'll grab the magnifying glass uh, and we'll do some close-ups and you'll be able to see this uh, in much better detail. Okay, so here's as close as I can possibly get to the uh, drosser whilst the camera is still within focal range. So you can kind of see a little bit of a close-up uh, and the state of the leaves there. Uh, there are some aphids on it. There's one sort of center to the right of the growth. And right on the end of that unfurling leaf, you can kind of see it wiggling around. There's another aphid there. Surprisingly, using the light up magnifying glass works really, really well. So hold on to your pants, here we go, okay. Right, hopefully, especially if I can get it, see him? Try and keep it still so you guys can see. There's an aphid that actually in the act. I think it's confusing the camera a little bit. I've actually see him moving around. You son of a what's it? Look at him. He's not actually feeding, but he's finding himself a nice cell vacuole to plug his little uh, his little face thing into so that he can have a suck on that plant. On oh, my beautiful, beautiful drosera. If we look elsewhere on the plant, instantly out of focus, I know still kind of in focus, you can see the deformation of the leaves anyway. So that's, that's what you're gonna look for uh, in your plant. Also, if I zoom out, another key location to look for is underneath the leaves because they will hide right underneath here and in the creases. Some of them will even cause the edges of the leaves to roll over. So they'll roll the edges of the leaves over and then they'll actually hide underneath there. So if you're spraying neem, you've got to be careful to get the underneath of the plant, otherwise the light hitters are gonna miss them. I'm just gonna, hang on. Hang on. Can we see him from there? You can just make him out. Right. Where is he? Where is he? Right. Are you watching? Yeah! You die! That's one down, 400 billion to go. That literally hasn't made a dent at all. I hope you enjoyed that graphic death of aphid. Uh, I found that deeply satisfying. So let's move on to some of the other plants. Even pigwicklia are also susceptible to um, aphids, which blows my mind because you've basically got living flypaper. And they, I've even seen them on the surface, the carnivorous surface of the leaves, being feeding away quite happily without being dissolved. Now these are uh, my pinguiclia moctezuma cross gigantia. They're very lush green at the moment, much darker than they would be normally. It's because they've been in isolation. They've basically been moved off of the benches down to the ground, so they've gone a bit dark. So even on this, there are aphids. If you look closely at this leaf here, you can see that it's kind of cupped and become deformed. Uh, that's as a result of aphids feeding on it. I don't know if you might be able to see it, there's actually, see, those, see there's a little white speck, if I zoom in you might be able to see it. Now as the uh, aphids grow, they molt, so they shed a layer of skin. And you might see uh, on some of your plants, little white castings. If I use the... Uh, precision this is. See those little white things just there? 
Well, those little white things are a are like a like a when a snake sheds its skin. As these things grow, uh, you will get um, they they will cast their skins off. So as they get larger, they cast a layer of skin off. There they are. You sort of saw them for a moment there briefly. I think it's confusing the camera. What with it focusing and stuff. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for those because they're a dead dead giveaway. If you see those, uh, you will have aphids hiding on your plant. This is going to be a tricky centre of shot. I hope you can all see that on that deformed leaf. There they are again. More aphids. Make sure you're fully zoomed in. You are. So this is, bearing in mind this is like the living, oh, the equivalent of living flypaper. They're actually feeding on the carnivorous surface of the leaf there. So it just goes to show how powerful and resilient they actually are. I hope you can see them a little bit clearer there. We might be able to if I pull this leaf out of the way. See them in even better detail. There they are. Actually feeding on the carnivorous plant without being dissolved and eaten by it. It, blow, it boggles the mind, so they're there anyway. Drosera capensis are particularly prone to aphids. Well, I've found, I've had outbreaks on these plants before, a long time ago, um, but they just, because they just lack, they lack a waxy cuticle. But the orchids have a nice thick layer of waxy coating over the surface of the photosynthetic layer of their leaves. Uh, which helps to protect them, makes them much tougher, much harder to penetrate. So you'll find aphids mainly feeding on the uh, sort of the younger parts, like new, newly growing sections of the um, of the plant itself. So like new buds, uh, new flower stalks, uh, new growth. That's where they'll tend to uh, to sort of uh, attack those plants because they're just that much more durable. But these uh, these kind of plants, especially drosophila, they have no waxy cuticles, so they have like no protection. So you get lots of deformed leaves. You can see them here, these sort of curly leaves. There's one over the back. This one here is curled up completely by my finger now. Um, and this one, I actually had a look at this, and it seems to have, with multiple applications of, um, of neem, it seems to have um, been cleared. Um, I can't seem to find any more aphids on it at the moment. And the, the leaves are regenerating. You can see uh, the glands. Uh, on this leaf here as it, as it matures, they're all coming out, they're nice and sticky, and they look much more healthy. Um, and if we zoom in, this is where you'll see a lot of aphids. If you have uh, plants that have got aphids, they will collect right the way down here, basically in the crown of the plant, where the majority of the new leaves emerge from. They'll be down in here, so these are the places to look, uh, and that's where you'll see them hiding. But as I said previously, these, the leaves on this plant are coming back beautifully. So we've got lots of nice new glands there. So this one's probably clear. It's still going to be getting a good unpotting and cleaning as well. Front and centre of shot, we've got Drosera Hamiltonii. This guy's quite a bit of a fussy grower anyway. You need to uh, keep it cool and even then it sort of salts. It doesn't produce a lot of dew. It, it was really beautiful and dewy and looking really, really amazing. Uh, and then I noticed some aphids, especially in this area. Um, and I had to spray it with neem, which has made it lose a lot of its, um, its dew, basically. It can't produce it. Its glands are blocked with the uh, neem oil, so you get this sort of like dry, non-sticky appearance. Now, the places to check with, with plants like this is literally, once again, underneath the leaves. So pick up the little leaflets here. Pick up the ones that are newly emerging. Try very careful not to break them and look underneath because those dastardly aphids, they will hide underneath here where the neem can't get to them. And I mean, this got a real blast the other day. You can see a little young one here, which is coming up from the roots. Doesn't seem to be any on it at the moment, but it can't be trusted. And my poor Drosera prolifera, if I turn it around this way, so it's center of shot. Uh, this has got some deformed leaves on it here, uh, where it also had uh, aphids. So this got nuked with neem. They sort of, they, they always suffer a little bit. Uh, so it's going to need unpotting and repotting and also we're going to be doing some washing and cleaning. I am saving the best to last, don't worry. Now this plant was a present. Dan, this is your Drosera cunifolia. Even this guy has fallen foul of the aphid army. Unfortunately there were some, once again, uh, growing or some feeding on the rosette of the plant just here. So it got nuked with neem oil. I don't seem to see any new ones on it, but it doesn't mean it's clear. So we're going to be getting this guy out, unpotting it and giving it a good wash uh, with some rainwater. 
to make dislodge anything that is there before potting it up again. I mean, this media is almost brand new, so it can go back in here afterwards, but we're going to get that guy out and try and uh, give him a good cleaning. So the next, the next one is the big, big plant. Okay, so these were some of my first ever sun juice. These are my Drosera Capensis Alba. Excuse me, quick swig of beer. And I've had these guys for flipping ages. And unfortunately, they have become utterly infested with aphids. I can see they, they set seeds so easily. They produce yet loads of small Drosera in what was live sphagnum moss uh, at the base here. Uh, they're all absolutely covered, but the place where they're most prolific is actually on the flower spikes where there is loads of them. I can see literally probably a good 30 or 40 on one flower spike over here. So it's those sorts of things we're going to be targeting particularly. What I'll do is I'll move you um, and uh, I'll put some black card behind it and we'll have a look, see if we can see them with the microscope. Okay, so on this flower spike, this one's actually split this flower spike and it's fallen over. It's still full of vac va vascular fluids and the aphids are really having a whale of a time. So I'm just holding a piece of card behind it here so that it's in focus, we can actually see it. I'm gonna try and light them up so we've got a bit of a better view. You can see them there, like plumbed in basically into the vascular system of the plant, eating away, having a really lovely time. Uh, so that these, I'm going to try and leave these in place so they're actually, you see, see some further down there as well uh, on the stem of that, on that flower spot. I'm going to try and leave these in situ as much as possible so that we can use them as a, guinea pigs basically to try out the two different types of um, biological control or pesticides that I have uh, for this purpose. And we'll learn a bit, of, or I'll show you what I've got now. Okay, so the two products that I, we're going to be, well, one that I already used and one that I've just purchased, we're going to be using these two products to conduct a bit of an experiment on the efficacy. To, so basically to see which one of these is, uh, works well. Now neem oil, pure neem oil, is, I'm also, when I just say this is not product placement, I'm not small, these are just the two, um, the, the two products that I've got basically. They're readily available on eBay, um, so that's where these came from. So. Neem oil, we already know about. I use neem oil to great effect. It seems to work really, really well. Well, it seems to work best on orchids for some reason. Uh, they seem to be affected less by its application, i.e. I see less deformed leaves. They don't tend to stop growing as such. And I think that's a lot to do with um, their thicker waxy cuticle. They basically don't absorb as much of this stuff. Uh, and they're also less prone to being burnt. Um, so we know about neem oil. Neem oil's good. It's got anthracnazine, I think, it, as a, as a direct. I think it's called the active chemical anyway in it. So it affects um, aphids by basically initially it block they, they don't have lungs, so they have small holes in their sides and which which are basically open. Uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen gaseous exchange is allowed able to happen through those vents in their sides of their bodies per, constantly basically. They can also in times of stress shut them off as well. So even if you submerge the plant underwater, if you don't do it for long enough, they will actually just survive. It's quite impressive really to be entirely honest. They are amazing creatures really. They're very good at surviving and not dying and multiplying. Um, so we already know about neem oil. So we're going to be using some neem oil uh, in the concentrate which I, I just make up as I go along. But you can use this in surprisingly strong concentrations. Um, so this stuff on initial spray lands on the aphids. Uh, a lot of them suffocate and die out quite quickly that way. Uh, the ones that you don't completely cope but they get covered with it this the chemicals in it, it affects and they stop feeding and they stop breeding uh, they stop laying eggs and any of the eggs which have been laid that this lands on that I mean, I mean aphids very rarely lay eggs they're actually born pregnant uh, very few males it's mainly females so they're actually born pregnant so within a couple of days of being born a female aphid is able to reproduce and produce another almost like a clone of itself but if eggs are present this will stop the eggs from uh, for, from um, hatching that's the right word then the next thing so this this is naturally occurring um, a completely naturally occurring substance uh, the next thing I've got is also uh, a naturally occurring substance because um, I, I, I really want I'm not one for 
I'm, I'm not saying that I wouldn't use a man-made strong chemical systemic pesticide because I would in the greenhouse because actually it's a confined space in there. Um, especially in winter, none of the vents are open. No, no potentially harmful materials would leave the greenhouse. So you can effectively vacuum pack it, spray it, nuke everything that's in there. I don't get many beneficial insects like ladybirds and stuff but simply because I have carnivorous plants and they make excellent food for Nepenthes. So um, that's, I'm not too concerned about the ecological impacts of doing stuff like that. It's just that um, as far as, especially with the carnivorous plants, they will not take chemicals they will just cark it immediately they just they will simply just die very very quickly so that's why i've tried to go on down the um the, the natural organic insecticide uh, so this is pyrethrum okay this is uh, it comes from a, a a flowering plant which looks a bit like oxide daisies i think is it like a is it a member of the chrysanthemum or something like that i'm not entirely sure what i'll do is i'll put a bit of information up on the screen about now and that's where this has come from. So this is a this is made of the pressed flowers of that plant, and it is lethal to most insects immediately on contact. So if it crawls, squiggles, sucks, chews, um, caterpillars, white fly, even red spider mite, if it, this comes into contact, it will kill them dead pretty quickly, almost straight away. Uh, and I've been reading a lot about this and. Um, Whereas I would have no issues using this on orchids, because I think they can hack it a lot better than most plants, I, there isn't much research, or I can't find much research um, or information on how this would affect carnivorous plants. So we're going to do our own test to see how this actually affects carnivorous plants. Because even if neem knocks it back, and this starts really gentle, I don't know what this is going to do. This might actually just kill them. So that's what these test subjects behind me are going to be here. So we're going to we're going to spray the aphids. I'll cut the flower stalks off and we'll put them in a jar. Okay. So we've got a good um, number of aphids. What I'll do is I'll, um, I'll make sure there's some air in there and we'll um, we'll spray it with both. Of, each jar will get a dose of one of these um, and then we'll record the evidence. We'll just see. We'll do it every sort of two to three days and we'll see what has happened and how quickly it's affected the um, the aphids. And also what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray one of these plants each. So each one of these Drosera capensis I've got over here is gonna get treated, it's gonna get unpotted, repotted in some, some nice fresh media, and then it's gonna get sprayed with either the pyrethrum or the neem oil. And what I might do is a bit of a test for the little one, because I've got loads of seeds, these things grow like weeds basically. I'm not worried about losing these plants particularly. The little one down there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a combination, okay? I'm going to do a neem oil pyrethrin emulsified combination to see whether it can handle that, because that, to me, is a winning combination. You've got something that's a delayed action which stops things from breeding completely, and stuff that's a contact killer. If we can combine these two together, I think that's going to be unstoppable. It might even kill me, I don't know. So it's going to be a real um, test. I'm quite excited because... I do stuff like this. Yeah, I think it's fun and interesting. You don't see this sort of thing on YouTube all the time. I certainly can't find much information about both these products and how they interact with the plant in which they're being sprayed. So let's have a look and uh, see how we get on. So the next thing to do is, I'm probably not gonna bore your brains out with this, but I'm gonna unpot, no I'm not. I'm gonna cut these stems off of this and I'm gonna put them into jam jars, okay? And we're gonna have a look at the, um, I'll treat each one with one of these, but I'll, I'll film it, so it'll all make sense, basically, I'll label them. Uh, and then we'll do these, and then I won't bore you guys, so I'll unpot everything, I'll literally just unpot everything, so it's all there, we'll have a look at it once it's unpotted, uh, and then I'm gonna wash everything, so I'm gonna spray everything off, because actually, aphids are really crap at hanging on, and if you spray them off with a strong water jet, you can just, you just blow them off, they just spill off down the sink, they won't come back again, they're, they're not that good, they don't grow wings until much later on in life, anyway, they don't really do a lot of flying, so, well, I'll put everything, have a look at it, I'll give it a little good wash. Uh, in the meantime, I'll get the experiments sort of set up as well and talk about how we're going to be diluting this into what concentrations. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and mix up my neem solution. So I've got a five litre um, hose lock spray, pressurised spray bottle here, which is what I'm going to fill up. So there's four and a half litres approximately in a gallon. So this is five litres, so it's just under a... Uh, just under, just over a gallon. So what I'm going to do is for, I'm going to add a teaspoon of neem oil for every litre. 
this stuff goes a long way. They're just level teaspoons, like that. And this was a, um, this was, how much is this? A 500 ml bottle? 200 ml bottle, this cost me about seven quid off of eBay, so it wasn't very expensive. So we've got five teaspoons of neem on in there, and I'm getting that putrid strength, stent, strength? The uh, strong scent of, I think it smells like very, very cooked, slightly burnt onions. And what I'm gonna add to that is, I'm gonna add just a half a teaspoon of soap. In this case, I'm just using, I don't know what this is, uh, some form of normal dishwasher, um, uh, washing up soap. And that's really important to apply that. It's a very small amount compared to once it's all diluted, really, in the, in the grand scheme of things. But what that helps to do, because there's an oil in there, it helps to break up and clarify the oil so the oil is then able to spread better. Uh, and when you're giving it a good shake, because you've got to shake this stuff all the time when you're applying, it's breaking up that oil so that it, it actually comes out the end of the nose. Otherwise, you'll just find it'll sit as like a scummy layer on top of the water. So it's very important to put some, something in it which is going to break that up. Now what I'm going to do with this is just fill this up with normal rainwater uh, at the water butt out there and um, that's, that'll be at room temperature so it will stay because you need to keep this stuff at room temperature otherwise it just becomes a solid waxy lump basically. So that'll be ready to apply in a few moments. So I'll go and fill that up, get the lid on it, give it a good shake uh, and then I'm going to make up a very small thing of the pyrethrum because I don't actually know whether I'm going to use this yet because part of the whole reason we're doing this is to see whether this is going to kill all my plants. So. I'll go and do that now, and then we'll tune back in for mixing up the pyrethrum. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna mix up is the pyrethrum. Is my really seeing this? Pyrethrum, 5EC, natural organic insecticide. Now, at the back of this, it's got a little label you can peel off, and uh, it tells me the rates of use. It says, apply pyrethrum 5EC at a dilution rate of 20 milliliters of this fluid in five liters of water for outdoor crops apply a minimum individual dose of 1.1 litres product per hectare. 1.1 litre? Really? A hectare? Doesn't sound right. Anyway, so we're going to go off the first, <laughs> first measurement, dilution rate of 20 millilitres in 5 litres. Uh, and each one of these, this measuring pot here, if I bring it in front of you, this measuring pot here, it's one of those ones where you can push and then the fluid comes up here and fills this up. This is five milliliters. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do half a liter. So I'm gonna measure out, I'm gonna measure out half. So I'm gonna measure out 2.5. This is gonna be uber accurate. 2.5 mil of that fluid in there. Cause this is going into half a liter of water. There we go. Because actually, I don't know if I'm going to, we just don't know, this is all just a big test for me. So I've got half a litre of water in there, 2.5 mil of the pyrethrum. I'm going to put it back, although it's organic, I don't want it going near anything. I'm also, I'm doing this in the kitchen. This probably isn't, the, it's all organic, it's fine, I'm sure. I'm going to wake up with kids with five arms and stuff in the morning. But on a serious note, I will be having a serious clear up after this. Um, and this is gone, I haven't spilled anything, it's gone away in that. And the neem oil you can eat, you can use, you can actually put this on your skin. So that's ready to rock and roll. So what I've done is I've filled up the big spray bottle with the neem, because I know I'm going to use that uh, around the greenhouse anyway. And I've knocked up just half a litre of this uh, for the purposes of this experiment. Give that a bit of a shake up there. Um, and then what I'll do is, to, to, to make the mutant combination, I'm going to pour half a litre of the neem oil into this container to make up a whole litre of the mutant combination, which will be pyrethrum and neem oil, double whammy maximum effect. So we'll see how that goes. What I'll do is, we'll go over to the sink, I'll move you so you can see. I'll get these jars, I'll find some labels for them first as well, uh, and then we're gonna spray applicate both of them, make sure we get the aphids, the little toe rags, uh, put a lid on, and then what I'll be doing is, uh, making a tiny hole in the top so there's plenty of air. To be honest, there's plenty of air in there anyway. They're only microcosmically small. And um, then we'll have a look at uh, labelling those up. Pop them over here on a windowsill. And then we'll have to do an update, I guess, every 24 hours, really. Otherwise, it's not going to be accurate. So I'll be doing an update on these 
tomorrow, which will be quite good. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Uh, then I've got the plants to wash off, and uh, we can have a quick look at those before I pop them up. And then they're going to be getting sprayed in the same way. So one with pyrethrum, one with the neem oil, and one with the neem oil pyrethrum mega mix, which is going to be quite exciting. Before that, we're going to give them a wash off as well, just in the sink. We're just going to give them a proper wash off. Um, spray away any of those nasty, so basically knocking off as many as the aphids we possibly can before we then treat them and um, and we'll see how we get on. So um, yeah, basically just find some labels for these. Okay, so we've got our jam jar in front of us. This has got some of the, um, hopefully you can see that, it's got some of the flower spikes which have got the aphids on. What I'm going to do is give them a quick, this, is, this creates a real plume, so just going to give them a little blast like that. There we go, and that'll do. I don't think I need to put any more on there than that. Just grab a lid from behind. I'm just going to screw a lid on. A lid on there like that. It's nice and tight now. So the little guy, I can, I'm just looking inside, I can see they are... The spray has knocked some of them off. There's one or two on the sides of the glass which look very unhappy. Uh, and the rest of them are still actually on the flower spike. Uh, itself so we'll be having a look at that oh they look quite agitated I don't think they like that so I'm going to label that guy up quickly okay so all I've done there is just label that with pyrethrum the date and the time at which I've sprayed it it's actually 10 o'clock at night here so that's that one done next is going to be the neem oil so I need to grab a few bits uh, conveniently I've left this the opposite side of the room Ugh. now this thing doesn't produce as fine a spray as the last one, so we're going to have to be a little bit more careful, methinks, because otherwise we're going to end up just obliterating the aphids before uh, they really get a chance to experience, I'm just shaking up the bottle like this, the full joys of pyrethrum and neem. So, I'm just going to give this one a, yep, there's the pressure. I'm just going to give that a quick, okay. So what I'm going to do is move that a little bit closer so I can reach it. Hopefully this is recording. I'm just going to put the head in here. Like that. I don't need to give it any more. It's just two little squirts in there. I'm just going to let the pressure off. There we go. Let the pressure off of that guy. Put the lid on this one. Oh, there's a bit of excess fluid in there. I wonder if I can tip some of that out. Ooh. I don't want to have too much excess fluid in there because I don't think it will be fair. Let's have a quick look. I can definitely see some aphids, many aphids. They've had a meaty, you can see, hopefully you can see there's a there's like a, a thick film uh, on the inside of the uh, glass there. Um, and that's obviously coated all the aphids as well. There's a lot still on there, especially on the smaller piece, which is down in the bottom. And I'll label that up. And I've just labeled this one up as well with the name, the date and the time which I sprayed it. And then these guys are gonna go over on the windowsill. If I turn you guys around. On the windowsill over there near the green blind. So I'll go and pop those guys over there now. I will probably move these uh, before the kids come down as well. So uh, I don't know, I'll stick them up on something out of the way where the kids can't reach them. I don't want them fiddling with them. Okay, so those are our test samples all set out now. What I've got basically, we've got one flower spike covered in aphids, which is covered in neem oil, uh, a dilution of five teaspoons to five litres and half a teaspoon of washing up liquid, washing up liquid. And we've got one jam jar full of flower spikes covered in aphids, which has been treated with the pyrethrum, a dilution of 2.5 millilitres to 0.5 litres. Um, as for basically as close to manufacturer's instructions as I can for the pyrethrum. As for the neem, um, there's lots of different suggestions on the dilution rates out there. So hopefully we've got that sort of somewhere in between for both. So what I'll do is when I get home from work tomorrow, I'll do another update and uh, we'll see what's happened in just, well, I don't know, what time will I get back tomorrow? It'll be about 16 hours. Uh, and we'll have a look at them then. I'll, I'll probably, um, I'll, I'll just film it. We'll have a close up and see if I can get the... Um, magnifying glass involved and uh, we'll go from there. Fingers crossed.